Hey everyone, Kevin here. What I'd like to do in this video is show you this. This is what I would probably refer to as a power meter, but most people call it a kilowatt meter. I think it's you know it's quite popular by that term online. And what it will help you do is show you the power that you're using on well any device that plugs into your wall, um, watts, volts, amps, how much it's going to cost you, that kind of thing. And that's quite important if you've got a custom PC, if you're building a television or you just want to track, you know, if you've got a, a large gangway, a large adapter with like five or six things going in, you want to know how much something is drawing, well this is where you can use something like this to see what's actually going on because, for example, in my PC, you, you can't really get any software that can give you an accurate uh, or any kind of accurate rep representation of what power you're using, you know, it just can't be done. You, you can use calculators to put in what components you're using, but that's no substitute for actually checking it yourself. So I'd like to show you that in this video. This is a very basic one. This, you know, you'll see this being branded under many different names. This one's called Florian. Comes in a generic box, a generic manual. Um, in Amazon in UK, it was like 22 or 23 pounds for two. So I was gonna get one, but I thought I'll get another one just to, you know, keep one plugged in and it's, it helps me check some things. So we're gonna go vlog style, which means camera's going to be moving about with shaky cam. So this is the second one. You can see the other one's plugged in just now. And I actually just reset that, but th th this is the thing. This is quite basic. And one of the things that I found was that when you input the cost, etc., cetera, and, and, you know, other things, it shows you the high and the low, but then, you know, after 42 minutes or something like that, it's tracking the high. And if you want to re-track it, i.e. for the purpose of a video showing you something, well, it's still showing you the, the previous values. And I'll explain that in a second. You've got kilowatt hours. Volts, amps, wattage low, wattage high. Um, I think if we go down here, this one is time and price display. So you'll see this in the manual. Uh, number one, time watt cost, time cumulative electrical quantity display. It's a bit of a mouthful. Time voltage frequency display, then current, then minimum power watts, and then maximum power. And the last one is time and price. And it can go, where is it? It's up to like, 9,999 watts. So, you know, for your home, there's nothing that's going to be, you know, draining that amount of power, but maybe in a, a manufacturing or some sort of, you know, industrial situation, um, you'd maybe have a large machine that, that used that, but I think you'd be spending more than 10 bucks if you were trying to, you know, check, track more than 10,000 watts. So, um, my computer's idle. So, if I check Task Manager, where are we? Where are we? Okay, so I've got I've got Chrome open, I've got some things like uh, apps open, etc. But by and large, you look here, zero percent, two percent in that GPU. So one GPU is zero. What the other one's one percent. It's basically the monitor, uh, seven percent. The CPU three percent. There's nothing really happening. I would consider this idle. I don't even have Photoshop or anything else open, so it's it's pretty idle. So I've just reset this so it doesn't have the cost per hour. So. Um, if you put the cost, you, what you have to do is, that flashes, if you can see it, I'm sorry, the, the, the lighting is bad down here, this is where the lack of a backlight comes in annoying. So, you push that, push that, push that, I'm going to put mines as 14 pence. It's about that, roughly. So, I've got the cost now, is 14. Now, it's just generic, so that could be dollars, four, 0.14 dollars, 0.14 pounds, euros, whatever, rupees. Um, so this is the total. So we've got the, that looks like the, the watts used so far. So that should go up over time. Theory, I think that's that right. So we've got, if I push power, we've got kilowatt hour, volts, amps, uh, watts low, watts high, and this should be the time cumulative dis display, I think it is. Um, this is where it's, this last one is number seven, a uh, time price display. So if we go back and to the next one, this one is what cost display. So this is your cost it will be. And the next one is cumulative. So this is the total amount of electricity I've used since resetting it. So it's that idle and low watt is 72, high 185. So this has got a 1000 watt PSU in it. So you can see when the computer is doing nothing, the graphics cards aren't being tested, well, nothing's really going on. You know, I'm using under 200 watts. 
So then when you start using graphics cards, things change. So what I'm going to do is activate uh, nice hash. In fact, I'll stop that for a second just to check. Okay. So I'm going to put in the two GPUs and the CPU. Uh, you know, from the task manager, this will still be relatively, you know, when, when I've, I've set this up for mining, the fans will go a little bit noisier, but if I go through here, I've actually got a profile mining because when you've got 100% power, you're not really getting much more from it. Um, so you can see that one's up to 27%, the other one's it's still at zero. But both of them are, will be used. I don't know why this one doesn't seem to track as well. You know, it, it's saying that pretty much no activity, despite the fact it's been used. But this, this is a kind of standard mining environment. Um, and let's see what's going on here. So high has now went up to 651 watts. So, so there's 72.5 below, 650 watts. So clearly a 650 watt PSU wouldn't have been enough. But under this situation, an 850 watt might have been um, suitable. But it's, it's important to remember, you know, that a PSU isn't 100% efficient. If, you know, this has got 1,000 watts, if it was a gold standard PSU with 90% efficiency, if that was showing 1,000 watts, only 900 would actually be going to the PC. So you need to remember that efficiency. Uh, before I had the 650, it was about 90%. So, you know, you can knock 10% off that 650. You're under 600 watts. And for two graphics cards, well, as you can see, that clearly wouldn't have been enough. An 850 might have been enough, but it's important to remember, you know, the graphics cards aren't really being tested that much right now. But I'm hoping that this test will help. The, the other thing, Awesome Miner's got a, a kind of benchmarking thing. So what I'm going to do is combine. You can do a test for either GPU, but I'm going to do a combined one. I'll do it fast. Um, and hopefully this will start pushing the GPUs. So it's taking its time there. So... What this does, in this one, what it does is goes through each one and it tries to see what's going on. Um, those are stopped, so run the benchmark. Precise. Okay, right, so that one isn't working. Bad example. It doesn't seem to be working that well. So what I'm going to do, backup. I've got another backup here. I'll do a stress test. Right, I'll pick one GPU. So this is one GPU, and we're going to do a stress test. So the stress test is going. This is just one GPU, and well, it's going up to 655. Now, that seems like nothing's really happening, but remember, only one GPU is actually being used right now. So we're up to about 391. If you take it, you know, with it being idle, being... I don't know, maybe a bit, maybe this is like 275, 300 watts um, when it's been stressed. But if you imagine if I had both graphics cards, because again, right now, you've got one GPU at 99%. There are situations when I've got both GPUs going. Um, let's see, like, so for example, that's the first one being stressed. Take that away. Now I'm going to put the other one in the go. So now the second GPU is going to be... Um, well, it's going to be, it's going to get put to work. And if I start these as well, really punish these here, just really get everything going. Hopefully my computer won't crash because I am going to put it under a lot of stress here. So, this is stressing, that one's stressing one GPU. You've got miners stressing all the GPUs now. Um, so, we maybe see the, the wattage going up for the high. So, this is up to... Yeah, this one seems to show you the kind of live one, so I'll take that back. It does seem to show you that. So that's 673, 650, 665. Now, again, both GPUs aren't 100% right now. If the, the second GPU is at 100%, I reckon we'd probably be at around the 750 watt mark. So, pretty interesting. So, I'll turn you around, I'll turn you around, but I will put you, I'll sit you on the PC, is that possible without dying? Yeah. So, um, what have we learned today? Um, well, 
it is quite a basic thing. You know, it, it's the, the live thing seems to work okay, but it's not 100% what I want. I'd like a backlight. I'd like the display to be a little bit more, well, it's very basic, but it does tell me what I need to know, you know. Uh, with one GPU at 100%, the other one at about, well, that it's going about, oh, it's, it's down now. They're, they're jumping around. But um, we're seeing about 700 uh, or so now. So I now have the high around 682, but that was at one GPU at 100% and the other about 20 and the CPU was about 70%. If I had two GPUs going at 100%, I reckon we're talking 720 watts. Uh, in hindsight, an 850 watt PSU may have been okay, but as far as expanding it, you know, add a few more drives in, it could have been cutting it a little bit close, but I think an 850 watt PSU could have saved me money, but I don't have any regrets getting a higher PSU because it is very, very efficient. These little things are cheap. They're kind of basic, but they do work. And when you're building something or you just want to track how much you're spending, these are very important. And for me, moving forward, if I'm going to be building equipment for mining, and I am, um, this is very, very important because you have to really un get an understanding of how much power you're using. A lot of components, they'll say that they're, you know, pulling one thing and they'll be pulling another. Even, for example, a graphics card that, you know, maybe it's rated 150 watts, if you overclock it, or even, you know, just in normal situations, it can sometimes go over 150 watts and spike at 180 or something like that. There's lots of uh, reviews on websites like Tom's Hardware that shows you, like a graphics card like this, the average is like, say, 275 watts when it's being pushed, but it can spike up to 320, 330, especially if you overclock it. So this is where things like this come in, because if you don't have the correct PSU for your computer, things get really screwy, your, the computer resets, you know, things start going wrong, applications close, and you really don't need enough power. And, you know, there's no software. It would be great if there was just a, you know, a script or something you could run on your computer that gave you a realistic idea of how much power your computer was using. But there isn't. And this is where things like this come in. And obviously these can be used for anything. Refrigerators, uh, cookers, televisions, anything that goes into the wall, you can use one of these to see uh, what's going. Basically give you a, a better picture. There is undoubtedly better ones in the market Without a doubt, you can get better ones than this. But for how I'm using it, for what I'm using it for, it's very, very simple. I'll just, you know, before I test something, I'll reset it. I'm not, I'm, I'm not really looking at this as a way to track cost over time because I actually have an electricity meter that tells me the cost over time. So that feature is kind of redundant for me because I already have it. The main thing for me is testing wattage. So, you know, if I'm building a mining rig or if I'm building a custom PC, I can take a graphics card out test it when it's idle, test it when it's stressed, put the graphics card in, and then if I'm putting in two, well then I can do my maths and I can work out, well this graphics card adds 200 watts or it adds 300 watts, maybe I need to use a more efficient PSU. The, 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 the difficult thing about all of that though is that when you're buying the components in the first place, well you don't have that information, you don't have anything to test. That's where the online power calculators come on for the power, for a PSU. Because, you know, say you're buying a custom PC, you don't have, you, you can't test anything until you've bought it, and you need a, a PSU to actually get it going. Um, it's just one of those things. But if you're building a lot of equipment or you just want to track anything, these things are quite useful. In hindsight, my computer probably could be doing with an 850 watt PSU. So in the future, if I need to use a 1000, I could, in theory, pull it out and put in an 850 if I need to use a 1000 for something else. But that sounds like a lot of work. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It was just a very quick video to show you how these things work. They're very simple, but for the price, I can't really complain too much, if I'm honest. Till next time, guys. Take care.